I work as a cybersecurity specialist. It's not the most glamorous job, but it's challenging and keeps me busy. My day usually involves hunting for threats, patching vulnerabilities, and making sure everything stays secure in the digital world. It's the kind of job that makes you feel like you're always a few steps ahead of danger. I'm proud of what I do, but I'm even prouder of the family I come home to. My wife, on the other hand, is the total opposite of the high-tech world I live in. She doesn't work outside the home her full-time job is taking care of our house and kids. She's got this natural beauty, you know? Brown hair, bright eyes, always full of energy, even when the kids wear her out. I'm not sure how she does it, but she keeps everything running smoothly, whether it's making sure the kids are fed, the house is clean, or just making life feel normal. We've got two kids now. Our firstborn is a boy, a real bundle of energy. He's the kind of kid who's always on the move always curious. He's at that stage where he's starting to ask more and more questions about the world. His favorite thing to do is follow me around when I'm home, trying to help with whatever I'm doing, even if it's something as boring as fixing the Wi-Fi. Then there's the new baby, our second. But we'll get to that later. Right now, life seems pretty perfect. We've got a house, the kids, the steady rhythm of everyday life. My wife takes care of the home, and I handle everything else. From the outside, we probably look like the typical happy family. A bit of chaos, sure, but nothing we can't handle. Everything feels like it's where it should be. But you know what they say looks can be deceiving. What happens next will throw everything into chaos in ways I never could have seen coming. Trust me, this is going to be a wild ride. Stay tuned and like and subscribe. My wife has always had a sharp sense of humor, and sarcasm is her weapon of choice. It's one of the things that first drew me to her. She's got this way of delivering the most absurd statements with a completely straight face, making it almost impossible to tell if she's joking or serious. You'd think after all these years I'd have learned to spot her tricks, but she still gets me sometimes. I remember one time we were sitting at the dinner table, and she casually mentioned, you know they say you can reset your metabolism by drinking ice water every morning for a week. I looked at her, thought about it for a second and actually started to believe it. It made sense in a weird way cold water shocking your system and all that. I was halfway to planning how I'd start drinking nothing but ice water the next morning when she cracked a smile. That's when I realized I'd fallen for it again. Of course, it was complete nonsense. She's done this countless times. Whether it's something about how turning off all the lights in the house at exactly 8pm saves double the electricity, or how wearing the same pair of socks for a week increases circulation. She can spin a lie so convincingly that you don't question it until it's too late. The most frustrating part? She never breaks character. She'll let me stew on whatever ridiculous fact she's made up until I finally figure it out on my own. And it's not just me. Our friends and even her own family have fallen victim to her sarcastic sense of humor. She's got this charm about her that makes you want to believe her, even when you know she's probably messing with you. It's like she enjoys keeping people on their toes, never quite knowing if she's being serious or just pulling their leg. But there's something about the way she delivers these jokes that keeps things light between us. It's part of her personality playful, witty, always ready with a comeback. Still, I'd be lying if I said it doesn't get under my skin sometimes. She'll drop one of her lines, and for a brief moment, I'll find myself questioning reality. But I've always been able to laugh it off, until recently. The last time she did it, though, it was different. It wasn't a quirky joke or some absurd fact. No, this one cut deeper. This one didn't just catch me off guard, it made me question everything. And the thing is, I couldn't just laugh it off this time. What she said next would rip my world apart. Recently, our second child was born a moment I had been eagerly waiting for. It's hard to put into words the feeling of holding your newborn in your arms for the first time. There's this overwhelming sense of love, mixed with a feeling of relief that both mom and baby are healthy. This time it was a girl. And in that moment, I felt like everything in my life had come full circle. I always dreamed of having both a son and a daughter, and now that dream was real. It felt like I had my team, my boy and my girl. The perfect duo. The bond I felt with our daughter was instant. It was different from when our son was born, but not in a better or worse way, just different. She was so small, so fragile, and yet I couldn't help but feel a strong connection with her right away. Every time I look at her, I can't help but smile. She's the kind of baby who instantly calms you just by being there. With our son, I felt a sense of adventure, like I had a little sidekick to go on life's journey with. But with her, it's this protective, nurturing instinct that I never knew I had. My parents were beyond thrilled when they found out we were expecting a girl. They'd always dreamed of having a granddaughter, and now their wish had come true. They'd been so supportive throughout everything, always checking in, offering help, and just being there for us in every way they could. I know how much this means to them, and seeing their faces light up when they hold her makes all the sleepless nights and diaper changes worth it. As for me, I was content. The house was ours, we had a reliable car. 
and my job in cybersecurity was stable. Life was good. Sure, there were stresses, and work could be demanding, but I'd managed to build the kind of life I'd always wanted. A simple one. Nothing too extravagant, just a home, a family, and a solid future. The kind of life where you come home, kick off your shoes, and feel a sense of peace. It's what I'd worked for. And now it seemed like everything had finally fallen into place. But before I get too deep into that, let me tell you about something else. Something that was about to turn everything upside down. You see, just when you think life is simple and predictable, it has a way of throwing you the kind of curveball that knocks you right off your feet. What happened next? Well, that's a story you won't want to miss. One evening, we were sitting in the living room after putting the kids to bed. It was one of those rare quiet moments when we could actually relax and talk without being interrupted. My wife was scrolling through her phone, and out of nowhere with her usual deadpan expression, she says, you know, even if a kid isn't biologically yours, you can still love them like they are. I paused for a second, trying to catch the sarcasm in her tone like I always do. I half laughed, thinking this was just another one of her ridiculous comments. I mean, it's the kind of thing she says all the time something strange and outlandish that makes me stop and think for a moment before realizing she's just messing with me. But for some reason, this time felt different. The way she said it. There wasn't the usual smirk, no playful glint in her eyes. It felt heavier somehow, like there was something more behind it. I brushed it off at first, smiling and shaking my head like I always do when she throws one of these lines at me. Yeah, sure I said, trying to keep it light. Even though a strange feeling started creeping into my gut, it was like a little voice in the back of my mind telling me not to laugh this one off so quickly. But I ignored it. I mean, she'd said crazier things before, right? This was just another one of her jokes. Still, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. As the night went on, her words kept replaying in my mind. Why would she say something like that? It didn't feel like a casual joke. And then I started thinking about our son. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that, lately, I'd been feeling closer to our newborn daughter than to him. Not that I didn't love him, but the bond with my daughter was so immediate and strong while with him. It had always felt a little different, a little more distant. That realization hit me hard. Was there something deeper here that I was missing? Could she have meant what she said? I couldn't believe I was even entertaining the thought, but I couldn't help it. A part of me wanted to just laugh it off and forget about it. But another part of me something deeper was gnawing at my mind. Could she have been serious? Could there be some truth behind her words? I tried to push the thought away, telling myself that I was overthinking it. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't shake the feeling that this wasn't just a joke. One night, I was out with my closest friend, Mark. We've known each other for years since before I even met my wife. He's the kind of guy you can say anything to, and after a few drinks we both started to loosen up. We were catching up, talking about work, life, and the usual stuff, but as the night went on, I couldn't shake that lingering feeling from what my wife had said. The more I thought about it, the more unsettled I felt. So, eventually, after a few more beers, I brought it up. Man, can I ask you something I started, trying to sound casual. Even though my mind was racing, Mark raised an eyebrow, sensing the seriousness in my voice. It's probably nothing, but have you ever thought about how your kid doesn't look like you? Like, at all? Mark leaned back in his chair, taking a sip of his beer. What do you mean? Are you talking about your boy? I nodded, feeling a little embarrassed even bringing it up, but the words just came pouring out. Yeah, I mean, he's a great kid and all, but sometimes I look at him, and... I don't know, man. He doesn't really look like me. Or act like me. And recently, my wife said something weird. She made this comment about how you can love a kid, even if he's not biologically yours. She said it like it was a joke. But it didn't feel like one, you know. Mark didn't say anything at first, just looked at me, taking in what I'd said. Finally, he set his beard down and leaned forward. Look, man, I don't want to freak you out, but... Trust your gut. If something feels off, maybe there's a reason for it. I'm not saying jump to conclusions, but you know what they say trust, but verify you deserve to know the truth. His words hit me harder than I expected. Trust but verify it sounded so simple, but it made sense. I tried to laugh it off, saying I was probably overthinking it, but deep down, Mark's words planted a seed of doubt that I couldn't ignore. I sat there, replaying everything in my mind the way my son didn't really resemble me. The strange comment my wife had made, and now this. Mark clapped me on the shoulder, snapping me out of my thoughts. Whatever you decide to do, just don't drive yourself crazy. But if you really need peace of mind, maybe it's worth looking into. I nodded, knowing he was right. I didn't want to accuse anyone of anything, 
but the unease was growing too strong to ignore. That night, as I drove home, I couldn't help but wonder if there was something bigger going on. Could my wife's comment have been a slip up? And more importantly, could my son really not be mine? The thought alone made my stomach turn, but Mark's words echoed in my head trust but verify. After that night with Mark, I couldn't shake the feeling that I needed to find out the truth. The seed of doubt had been planted, and it was growing faster than I could ignore. I kept thinking about what Mark said trust but verify. I knew I had to take some action, but I didn't want to raise any suspicions with my wife. The last thing I wanted was for her to catch wind of what I was doing. I started doing some research on how to get a DNA test done privately. It turned out to be easier than I thought. There were ways to collect and submit samples without anyone being the wiser. I found out that you don't necessarily need to have a direct sample from the person in question. Things like old pacifiers, hair or even toothbrushes can work for testing. It was a relief to know that I didn't have to confront anyone yet I could just go about this quietly and find out for myself. I decided to start with something simple. I went into our baby's room and retrieved one of the old pacifiers that our son had used. It wasn't hard to find we had a few lying around in his toy basket. I figured it would have enough of his DNA on it to be useful. I then needed to get a sample from my wife. I looked around the living room and noticed a single hair lying on the couch. It was from her I recognized it immediately. I picked it up carefully and put it in a small envelope. With the samples collected, I packed them up and made my way to a nearby lab that offered DNA testing services. I took extra precautions to ensure that no one would question me or get any hints about what I was doing. I filled out the paperwork, dropped off the samples, and paid for expedited results. My heart was racing the entire time, but I knew I had to do this. As I left the lab I tried to calm myself telling myself that this was just a precaution. I kept reminding myself that there could be perfectly reasonable explanations for everything, but deep down I was anxious. The waiting game was the hardest part, knowing that in a few days, I would have answers answers that could change everything. All I could do now was wait for the results. The thought of what they might reveal was both unsettling and strangely liberating. I was on the verge of discovering something crucial, and no matter how it turned out, I knew that things were about to get very complicated. A few days later I was at work when I noticed a notification on my phone and email from the lab. My heart skipped a beat as I opened it. The subject line read, DNA test results, Child's name. I took a deep breath and clicked to open it. The email was brief, but it contained a link to view the results online. My hands were shaking as I navigated to the results page. The moment the page loaded, I saw it. The results were clear and undeniable the child I thought was mine wasn't biologically related to me. I stared at the screen in disbelief, unable to process what I was seeing. My mind raced through a thousand thoughts, trying to grasp the reality of the situation. I had always believed that he was my son, but now everything I knew was being questioned. Shock was the only thing I felt at that moment. I couldn't believe that after all this time, Everything could be based on a lie. My world felt like it had been turned upside down in an instant. I had never imagined that something like this could happen to me, to us. It was like a punch to the gut that left me gasping for air. I had to read the results several times to make sure I wasn't misinterpreting them. But there it was, plain and simple he was not my biological child. As the reality sank in, my thoughts turned to what I needed to do next. I was determined to take this seriously and find out how to handle it. I couldn't just ignore it or pretend like it didn't matter. This was a significant revelation, and it demanded a serious response. I kept thinking about how I was going to confront this situation, how to address it with my wife, and what steps I needed to take to move forward. The emotional weight of the situation was almost too much to bear. I needed to gather my thoughts and plan my next steps carefully. The results were not just a personal blow but a complex situation that involved my family, our future, and everything we had built together. It was clear that I needed to act, but I had to decide how to proceed in a way that was fair to everyone involved. I was now at a crossroads, faced with a decision that would forever change the course of our lives. The test results had revealed a truth that was both shocking and painful. As I sat there processing the information, I knew one thing for certain the path forward was going to be challenging, and I had to approach it with both clarity and resolve. When I got home that evening I was determined to keep my composure. I needed to execute my plan without raising any suspicions. I wanted to make the evening seem ordinary, even romantic, to avoid making my wife suspicious. I knew that if I approached this conversation in a direct and confrontational way, it could lead to chaos before I was ready. I started by helping my wife with the bedtime routine for the kids. I went into their room, read them a story and made sure they were settled comfortably. It was a routine I was familiar with, and it helped to distract me from the gravity of the situation. As I tucked them in and kissed them goodnight, I felt a pang of sadness. It was heartbreaking to think about how things were about to change. After the kids were asleep, I turned my attention to my wife. I found her in the kitchen, 
tidying up after dinner. I approached her with a smile, trying to appear as relaxed as possible. Hey, how about we have a little time to ourselves tonight? I suggested, trying to sound casual. She looked up, a bit surprised but pleased. Sounds great, she replied with a smile. What do you have in mind? I decided to keep it simple. I picked her up in my arms and carried her towards the stairs. As I did, she looked at me with a playful grin and said, Oh, are we making a third tonight? Her tone was light and teasing, but I could hear the genuine curiosity behind it. I managed to chuckle and replied, Just thought we could have a quiet evening together. We made our way upstairs, and I carefully set her down on the bed, trying to keep my emotions in check. She seemed to enjoy the attention, and for a moment, Everything felt almost normal. I kissed her gently and told her to relax while I went to get something. I went to the bathroom to collect the papers and the results from the DNA test. I had them neatly organized and ready for when the time was right. My heart was pounding in my chest but I took deep breaths, trying to stay focused and calm. I wanted to make sure that when I presented the evidence, it would be clear and undeniable. When I returned to the bedroom, I sat next to her and took her hand. I tried to maintain a serene expression though I was internally bracing myself for what was to come. I've got something important to show you, I said, my voice steady despite the storm of emotions within me. She looked at me with curiosity, not yet realizing the gravity of the situation. As I began to unfold the evidence, I knew that everything was about to change. She looked up, sensing the change in tone. I slowly handed her the envelope containing the results. I had a DNA test done for our son. Her eyes widened in surprise, and she took the envelope from me with trembling hands. I watched as she opened it and pulled out the results. The look on her face shifted from confusion to realization as she read the document. I could see the color drain from her face, and her expression changed to one of horror and disbelief. For a moment, the room was silent except for the sound of her breathing becoming increasingly erratic. Her hands shook as she clutched the paper, and then, suddenly she burst into tears. The sobs came out uncontrollably and she buried her face in her hands. I'm so sorry, she cried out between gasps for breath. I didn't know how to tell you. I was so afraid. I sat there, feeling a mix of sadness and anger. I waited for her to calm down a bit before speaking again. How long have you been keeping this from me? I asked quietly, though I already knew the answer. Her cries became more frantic as she tried to speak through her tears. I made a mistake, she choked out. I was with someone else before we got married. I didn't mean for it to go this far. I was afraid of losing you, of everything falling apart. I didn't know how to adorn, and then it just, it just got worse. I'm so sorry. Her admission was a punch to the gut. It was clear now that the doubts I had were justified, but hearing it from her was a different kind of pain. She was sobbing uncontrollably, and her apologies seemed hollow compared to the gravity of what I was feeling. I trusted you, I said quietly. I thought we had built something together, but now it's all come crashing down. Her cries continued and I could see how overwhelmed she was by the situation. She reached out to me, trying to explain, but I was already starting to process the reality of the situation. The trust had been shattered, and I was left grappling with the decision of what to do next. The confrontation was intense, filled with raw emotion. It was a moment that would forever change our lives, and as she wept and begged for forgiveness, I knew that the path forward would be anything but easy. The room was heavy with tension, as my wife's sobs gradually faded into a painful silence. I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself amidst the storm of emotions. I had come to a decision, and I needed to be clear and firm about it. I looked at her, my heart aching but my resolve unshaken. I can't do this anymore, I said quietly but firmly. I can't live with the constant reminder of this betrayal. I'm going to file for divorce. Her eyes widened and she reached out, trying to grasp my hand, but I pulled away gently. Please, don't leave me, she pleaded, her voice breaking. We can work this out. We can fix it. I shook my head. No, it's too late for that. The trust is gone, and I can't pretend everything is okay. The child you've had with someone else. I paused, struggling with the weight of my words. That child deserves to be with his real father. I'm not going to be a substitute parent for someone else's child. Her face crumpled as the finality of my words hit her. She was still crying, but now it was mixed with a deep sense of helplessness. I turned away from her and began packing a few things for our youngest child. I had already made up my mind that I would take him with me. He was my child, and he deserved a stable environment away from the chaos. The next morning, I woke up early and made the necessary arrangements. I called her parents to explain the situation. It was an awkward and painful conversation, but I needed to make sure they understood what was happening. I told them about the infidelity the DNA test results, and my decision to take our younger child with me. They were shocked, and their initial reaction was a mix of disbelief and concern. After the call, 
I packed up my wife's belongings and prepared for her departure. I wasn't heartless, but I knew this was necessary. I couldn't continue to live in a situation where I felt so betrayed. I arranged for her to stay with her parents, hoping they could offer her some support during this difficult time. I knew that the path of moving forward alone with my child would be challenging. I had to figure out how to rebuild my life. The future was uncertain. But I knew one thing for sure I had to focus on being the best father. 